The creator economy is bigger than you think. I have been sniffing a smell that reminds me of a huge opportunity for creators to make money. It's kind of like when you drink your coffee and then you just feel that gut feeling that like something's about to erupt. That's the same feeling I have with this new opportunity for creators to monetize. And it has to deal with blockchain, social tokens, and NFTs. And in this video, I'm just gonna go over my plans to tackle that subject. So if you wanna learn more about how to monetize as a creator in the next generation, keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome to Building X8. Y'all, I am pissed. Okay, because last week's video, I asked you to give me suggestions on title names for the series and nobody suggested anything. So please comment some ideas. Just a little quick recap. In episode one, I talk about my company, X8 Media. We're an influencer agency and I talk all about the client projects we're working on. Last episode, I talked about my future for my company and the ideas I have to progress it into my new product, Create. In this video, we're gonna talk about more of Create and my ideas about the future and go into the nitty gritty of why I believe so much about blockchain. I mean, you probably have seen the word NFT floating around, whether it's on my Instagram story or a news press release. Like everybody is wondering how does making content and being creator have anything to do with blockchain? Before we dive into that, let me just first recap what the creator economy is. This is the creator economy in 60 seconds. The creator economy is people performing their dream passion. Creators earn income by creating and distributing their content online. In the 1990s, creators only existed to traditional media. So you had to watch someone on TV or a newspaper in order to get an audience. So think authors, actors, television stars, and athletes. But there was a shift. By 2000, 50% of US households had a digital device. Then in 2010, web sharing platforms started to emerge. With the influx of people having a phone and a bunch of social media platforms starting to emerge, this gave birth to the creator economy. This created direct connection from creators to fans, enabling multiple ways to monetize. As a creator, there's two ways to monetize, from the brand and from the audience. From the brand, you get money through the platform. So AdSense TikTok Creator Fund. But you can also earn revenue through brand deals, which is a brand directly sponsoring a certain video. Second to that, there's the audience slash fan relationship. This is where you can sell merch, subscription slash membership, and any digital product. 3.2 million creators have reported that they make over six figure salaries and over 50 million people consider them as creators. And I see this number 10 xing in the next few years. So now that you understand that most creators make money through brand revenue or audiences or a mixture of both, you might be wondering, there's more? And yes, there is another way to monetize. And honestly, for me to explain this, the rest of this video is gonna be pretty dense. So I recommend grabbing a snack because that whole intro is the fastest part of the video. Like the whole rest of this video is pretty fucking complex. So grab a snack, grab a water, I warned you. So my agency currently participates by helping creators with the brand side of things. We help creators get brand deals and sponsored revenue through brands. So that's X8. A quick little update. Last video I talked about we have five current whale projects. Well, we are currently working on two more. Whale 6 is a energy drink brand platform. We're super excited. I actually can't necessarily say more information about it yet, but soon to be coming. And there's Whale 7. Whale 7 is a streaming platform we're working with on promoting a new series for them. So we're really excited about that too. I did get asked how I price my projects with my whale clients. So I wanna quickly go over how I charge money. So I really love working in X8 because we're able to empower creators to get brand revenue, but I, I see something bigger lurking in the corner, okay? This is the creator economy in web. Three. So you might be wondering, Jade, I get it. Creators can make money through brands and fan revenue. What else could there be? Well, there's a new thing in town. And to understand this again, let me explain this in an analogy. I know you guys are like, what the fuck? Just give me the answer, bro. You need to know the context before you get the answer. Because if I just say the answer is social tokens and NFTs, you're going to be like, what the fuck? So I used to do a lot of art classes, okay? I actually used to, fun fact, enter a duck competition where I draw a duck and I got third place of the state in Washington. So your girl's an artiste. But essentially my mouth is so fucking big that I remember when I used to go to art galleries and shows, like people would have to duct tape my mouth shut as a kid because I would literally not stop talking. This is kind of like web 1.0. Oh. Web 1.0, which is like the early 2000s when the web was just starting, is when you're just able to read content. It's like when you're reading a blog article, or in this case, you're just looking at art in the gallery and you can't speak. 
then imagine, okay, you know, I'm drawing and I'm painting, going to these art galleries where my mouth is duct taped shut. I find an art class. And in these art classes, I'm able to talk to peers. We're able to draw together. And there's a sense of community as a newfound art lover. This is web two. Web two essentially is where social platforms enabled communication and connection. Platforms like Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram enable creators to talk to each other, right? You can comment on this video right now. So if you're watching this video, comment below your thoughts so far and give this video a like. You see, before in web one, you couldn't do that. And that's why it enables creators and fans to have a relationship because we could talk together. You know, you and I could have something going on. But then there's one more baby. Web three, this is something that I think just started with the rise of cryptocurrency and blockchain. You know, going back to this art analogy, you know, I'm a little older and I maybe don't take art classes every week, but I like to invest in art pieces, right? I, I used to buy antique dolls and then resell them on eBay a few years later for an upsell, right? Cause uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I think like that. <laughs> God, that was so cringy. But whether it's supreme items, you know, I think a lot of us buy things with the idea of selling it later for an investment opportunity. It's a collectible, it's a unique item. And if, because you love it, it could be returning in value in the future. This is web three. It's individually owned. It's all about going from renting attention to ownership. Instead of people just consuming content online, Web3 is where you can own a piece of that content, of that creator. You can have governance rights to vote on certain protocols. Essentially, we went from Web 1.0 reading, Web 2.0 consuming and conversing, to Web 3.0 ownership and financial assets, where if you love something, you can own a piece of it as like a financial Gain. By the way, Web3 is already here. Like I keep saying it's in the future, but it's already here. Like companies like Rarible, OpenSea, enable people to sell items and for audiences to own a portion of that art piece. So this is using the technology of blockchain. So blockchain, <laughs> I have to make a whole video on blockchain. Comment below if you guys want that. But essentially a lot of companies are building apps, platforms, marketplaces on the blockchain to enable people to own a piece of an asset, have a peer to peer connection and decentralize a lot of the media. So this is how I think creators are gonna monetize in this new web three era, which is now. Like it's not five years from now, it's not 10 years from now, it's happening right now. It will take time for it to become mainstream, which is why I'm making this video to give you guys the tea. Okay, I made this shitty graph. Essentially, you can see in web one, people get money through brands, advertising, which has been going on for a long time. Think commercials, right? Web two is enabling commerce, people selling merch, people selling membership. And now web three, creators are gonna launch two types of products, NFTs, which stands for non-fungible tokens. And the second thing is social tokens, launching their own currency. Let's dive into each of these deeply. An NFT is a digital unique item, whether it's an art piece, an event, a collectible, a sticker, a badge. Developers can limit their quantity. So there's only 10 in the world of this unique digital item, therefore making it a rare and collectible item. Then audiences, when they purchase that item and every time they resell it, the creator gets a kickback, 10% or whatever the royalty is. Creators can use NFTs to give people recognition. If you wanna gift an NFT, it's kind of a little, little gift for saying thank you. For example, I'm actually working on a pitch right now in X8 for one of the whales we're working with about creating a giveaway. And if someone participates in this giveaway, whether it's giving the brand the email or trying out this new flavor of drink, then we gift the audience this NFT bundle. And this NFT can unlock event passes to their next event. I can't say the name of the company, but it's a huge, huge event. Or maybe for example, a cool unlimited one year pass of the certain drink, getting this access to it, right? So we're using NFTs as a gifting medium. It doesn't also have to just be a transactional thing. I see this as more profitable than selling merch and physical items because it's a digital item, which in web two is one of the things that I think has a lot of friction, right? Like I worked with a ton of creators that sold $250,000, half a million dollar launches, but only take a small portion home, you know, out of those sales because physical items just have lower profit margins. I think NFTs are such an interesting space because you take home more revenue because there's just less cost and you're still providing a unique experience while the audience is incentivized to buy and sell because they also get a financial asset if they decide to uplist it on a marketplace. So then above NFTs is social tokens. I was interviewed this week from vidIQ, which is a software company and their, you know, their marketing team was like, what the fuck is a social token? And the easiest way I can explain this is Chuck E. Cheese tokens. You know, Chuck E. Cheese, I used to go there as a kid. And if you do a good task, if you play a game right, you get to exchange it for this cool little wall of gift items. So yes, creators are creating their own currency. And the reason why this is important is because social tokens are exchangeable, right? Like the US dollar and Bitcoin, you can exchange five Bitcoins for 
at this point, almost half a million dollars of US dollars, right? Because the conversion, one Bitcoin is worth $55,000 of US, right? So it's mutually exchangeable. Whereas NFTs are not exchangeable, you can't fractionalize it. So it's just, you own that digital asset. So to summarize, an NFT is when you own a specific digital asset. Social tokens enable you to co-own a community. What does it really mean to co-own a community? You might ask, well, this is not financial advice. Okay, but I'm gonna give you an example for one of the projects I'm working on slash experimenting in. So right now my company X8 is doing these brand things, but I started this new thing called Create for the past six months, researching ways creators get monetized in this new digital era. And one of the creators we're working with is called Nutshell Animations. He's the second largest TikTok animator in the world right now. And right now we're creating a nut token or a nut coin. We were planning to launch a Patreon where people pay for exclusive content. But as we're looking to it, you know, platforms take a huge percentage out of revenue. So what if instead of doing that, we ask people to hold Old nut tokens in exchange for the access to the membership. So say we launch this nut coin, right? What do the audience get? So we're thinking on three benefits. The first thing is community access. So if you hold 50 nut tokens, you can enter this Discord chat where it's locked if you don't have any, and you can communicate with people that are VIP members. And Nutshell can give exclusive updates to his new animations, highlight people, and it's like this exclusive little club if you hold these tokens. The second thing is you can co-own an NFT. So for example, say we're like, hey guys, if you hold Nutcoin, let's crowdfund our next animated TV show, which we're going to put it on a sale as an NFT. So essentially people could bid on this NFT, right? And the idea is like when we sell it, we're going to all put this money and profits into a greater mission, which is funding a show. And anybody who's a part of this mission gets a 10% of those rewards and sales. Since token holders make money every time your NFT sales, they're more likely to find a buyer and spread the message for you. And the last benefit is I think that it can enable people to build teams together. So this is more for the creator perspective, but you know, as a creator, your job is to focus on content, but sometimes you need help with getting editing help or scaling your team. And we are thinking at the Nut Nation community, we could pay people who are admin members, moderators, or people working on his animation side in Nutcoin. And in exchange in the future, they can liquidate this for actual other fiat and currency. This is huge. This is gonna take the creator economy from 50 million people to 500 million. You know, imagine you could make money not only being a creator, but participating in supporting a creator, right? If you like someone on YouTube and maybe you own some of their tokens, right? And you hold that for two years and then it becomes valuable in the future, right? It's a financial incentive that enables you to enjoy what you like and make money from it. And I think in Web3, it's gonna blur the line between fan, employee, investor, and everybody is going to get a piece of the pie because it's so decentralized. Essentially, you can make a living out of supporting people you like. And on the other end, as a creator, you can finally find a way to monetize that's not reliant on a platform, but instead reliant in your community, which is the most important thing with being a creator. So Monday, I was meeting with the founder at Coinvice. Coinvice is a platform where people can launch social tokens. The way they make money is say you want to mint your own tokens, they take a percentage out of your airdrops, and I think they have a monthly subscription fee on Discord. But we're meeting with them to launch for Not Nations tokens because I really want to find a platform that A is has really good products and two is able to grow with us. So we're just trying to figure out the structure of the tokens, you know, how we want to distribute it, how people can sign up. And it's honestly really stressful because the number one issue we're having is liquidity. So for those who don't know, I mentioned this beginning, but like, you know how one Bitcoin, you can swap it for a US dollar. For a creator to do that, it's right now not very legal. If you want to swap one nut coin for a US dollar, like you can't do that as of right now. And right now I'm researching with a few crypto layers how to properly do so because I don't want to get fucked by the government. I mean, there's a lot of horror stories where people create tokens, DAOs. Actually, one of them in 2016 got shut down. They're like a $150 million fund. And Genesis DAO, that's the name of the the group, they got shut down by the US government because they were a security issue. So some of the questions I have is how do we properly format a social token and NFT without getting fucked by the government? How much will it cost to do so? And also like how will creating a token as a creator affect your mental health? I I'm assuming it's super fucking stressful for people to have a currency that's you and you have to always perform and keep up. So I I I'm wondering these questions in my journey um, and we're gonna figure it out together. So yeah, the creator economy is bigger than I think. I think that there's gonna be millions, if not billions of people participating in it when they see the investment opportunity by supporting a creator. It's just a matter of uh, legal 
dancing before we can get there. Because I think the technology is here. It's just a matter of use case and business structure that's legally sound. Hopefully next week I can figure this shit out. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you join my Discord. It's the Create community where we research a bunch of these Web3 things. I figured this shit out with you guys because I'm learning every day. And y'all can join the family. Peace. Shout out to the car winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode.